There's something that really bothers me about the way that K-pop is treated in general internet discourse these days. So there's the like usual critiques about K-pop. It's sexist, it's misogynistic, it's racist, it's colorist. And to be clear, these things are all pretty much true. These are deep systemic issues in K-pop and Korean culture in general that do need to be addressed. However, the thing that bothers me is not the critiques themselves. It's the kind of almost paternalistic air that comes with them. A lot of people, when they make these critiques, almost have like this holier than thou attitude. Like, oh, Koreans, they're so sexist, they're so misogynistic. I can't believe the culture is like this, etc, etc. Uh, a couple problems with this. First of all, these are not issues unique to Korea. These are like global issues, including in America and in most Western cultures. And second of all, I feel like the way people treat K-pop culture and also non-white cultures in general tends to be a lot more scathing and damning than the way they treat white cultures. People may be willing to address, say, racism in Europe and various European countries, but the tone of that criticism tends to be more like, here's like this one little aspect of the culture that I think we need to address, and not this fiery kind of, oh, I can't believe the culture is so racist and so sexist or whatever. So why is it the case that criticisms against K-pop culture take on this almost paternalistic air, and people are so much harsher with their criticisms of non-white cultures than they are white cultures? Hi, I'm Modern Chu, and I believe that criticisms of K-pop are a form of neocolonialism. Let's get started. Indulge me for a moment while I lay out a thought experiment. Let's say you're wandering the internet someday and you discover this subculture in the Korean internet that for whatever reason is really preoccupied with American societal issues. There's like the Korean equivalent of a subreddit that always posts like articles about black people being beaten to death by police in America or like the ways in which the working class is exploited by big corporations like Amazon. And these are Korean people living in Korea speaking Korean to each other, all criticizing this foreign culture in another place of the world. Can we agree that that would be weird? It would be weird to find that, right? If you found that, you would be like, why are you so preoccupied with American culture? Don't you have your own stuff to work on? Don't you have your own societal issues to fix? Right? Like, that's that's weird. It's not that it's wrong. It's not that all these things are untrue about America, but it's weird that people from another country are this informed and this preoccupied about what's going on. And you might also think to yourself, isn't it really hard to, like, make these arguments and take this position if you don't have that much experience with the culture? Because, again, these are Korean people living in Korea. They may have visited America, but they don't live there. They didn't grow up with the culture, they don't have the historical background, they don't have the cultural background, to really understand like why American culture is the way it is. So just hold that in your head for a second. Think about how weird it would be for this Korean internet subculture to be really critical of American culture in this way. Just hold that in your head for a second while I open this up. There's a subreddit. It's not very popular. It's only got like 3,000, 4,000 ish people in it, but there is a subreddit entirely dedicated just to people hating on K-pop. And admittedly, this is a small subreddit. There's not that many people in it. But the fact that it exists is kind of weird, right? And it's not just the subreddit that I'm talking about. You will find people who are very open with their disgust about K-pop. Like, oh, it's such an exploitative culture. I can't believe they like sexualize minors. I can't believe all these different things. And again, these things are true. K-pop has problems, but there are definitely people out there, and I'm sure you've met some of them, who like a not insignificant part of their identity is the fact that they dislike K-pop and they're critical of Korean culture. So the thought experiment was not just a thought experiment, this is kind of the reality of how K-pop is treated on the internet. And so let me just take a moment to remind you of the two thoughts that we had in our thought experiment. The first one, preoccupation with another culture to this extent is weird. It's kind of weird to be this invested in the way that another culture manages itself and its societal issues and stuff like that. And two, you're probably lacking a lot of historical context and background information for why things are the way they are in that part of the world. And that background information doesn't necessarily justify the way things are, but it is still important to know before you levy criticism because having that deeper understanding of why and how cultures form is central to improving those cultures. So obviously I'm taking the most extreme example here. I'm taking the people who hate K-pop the most and the people who are most vocal about how much they hate K-pop, and I'm using that to kind of highlight what it is I'm talking about and why I find it kind of weird and bothersome. But if we reduce the scale somewhat, there are also people out there who don't necessarily like despise K-pop all the time, but they are very, very willing to get on a soapbox and say, man, K-pop's kind of fucked up, isn't it? Which again, true, totally true. But why are people so willing to say stuff like this? You know what would be a really interesting thing to say in a circumstance like this? Yeah, I've heard there's some like weird stuff going on with Korean culture. I don't really know that much about it though. I haven't had the time to like look into it or anything. I guess if they are sexist, it's bad, but, you know, I'm not informed enough to really have a strong stance on it either way. That is, like, the take of the century right there. I don't know enough to draw a conclusion. Oh my 
God, I would love anyone who's willing to just get up and say that. I don't know enough. Nobody says that on the internet. And what we have right now is kind of the opposite of that. People who are really, really willing to take a stand on stuff that they honestly just don't know that much about. And you know what? I think there's actually a really good reason for that, which I'm going to explain to you now. Here's the thing. America has a reputation of being kind of a nanny state for the rest of the world. Believe it or not, America actually has like a really deeply entrenched culture of deciding what other nations do. If you know anything about the Cold War and the war on communism, you already know where I'm going with this. In the period from say 1950 to like 1980-ish, roughly speaking, there were several countries who were trying to decide between the two big global powers of the time. Do we want to be a capitalist country or a communist country? And what's the fairest way to decide what a country does next? An election. A free and fair election where everybody votes. And guess what people voted for when they were given a free and fair election to decide what to do with the country? I'll give you two guesses. Did you guess that they voted for a capitalist system? You were wrong. A lot of them voted for communist systems, actually. And that includes Korea, by the way. I have this book over here, Korea's Place in the Sun. I read it when I was in university. And in the war between capitalism and communism, communism actually had the overwhelming popular support of Korean people. The only people who were really in support of a capitalist society were the ones who were already benefiting from it. People who happened to own land during the Japanese occupation and were able to leverage their land and existing status to be catapulted to great wealth. And so the Americans who were assigned to quote unquote manage the Korean situation had to leverage these existing middle-class families in order to garner enough resources and support in Korea to actually make a stand for capitalism. This same story plays out across the world and honestly it doesn't matter really which way the election plays out because whichever side wins the other side is going to continue to wage their cold war to like win back control of the nation and whatever. So the point being like the global powers that be at the time they were the United States and the USSR they have like this track record of feeling just very comfortable intervening in other countries and just deciding what they do next and that's really what gets me about Western takes on Korean culture and K-pop culture. The reason why Westerners feel so comfortable making these critiques of, say, Korean culture, but also other cultures in general, is because of colonialism and the tradition of colonialism. There is a long, long history in the world of people from America and Europe deciding, hey, this is what this culture is, this is what it's going to do next. And so anytime I see these takes online of like, here's why K-pop is so bad, someone's got to do something about this, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of all the justifications that colonial power was used to maintain their stranglehold over native peoples. And it reminds me that we're not really that far removed from that time in history. I think the reason why people feel so enabled to criticize Korean culture is because of these old colonial attitudes that we've inherited. There's the default assumption that Americans and Westerners get to decide what other cultures do. And I don't think we can live like that anymore. I think we really have to analyze ourselves and understand where that feeling comes from and how we're going to get rid of it. I'm going to coin what might be a new phrase, but I'm sure someone said it already. But it's the idea of cultural self-determination, the ability for a culture and a people to decide for themselves what they want to do in the world. And K-pop and Korean culture in general, I think, is a really good example of this. There are deep problems in K-pop. There are deep problems in Korean culture. And honestly, I think people are more or less right to point it out. I think it's really fair. However, the thing to understand is that it's nobody's right to fix those problems except for Korean people themselves. And the same is true, I think, for every culture across the world. African American culture, for example, does definitely have issues, but it's very different when a black person says, here are issues in our culture, let's fix them, versus when a white person says, damn, black people have some issues, don't they? Those are two really different things, and the difference, I think, is cultural self-determination. I think that we, as a global society, need to acknowledge that people and cultures deserve their right to decide for themselves what's right and wrong and how to address the issues that are on the table. Yes, K-pop is problematic. Everybody knows that. Easterners, Westerners, Koreans, non-Koreans, we all get it. We all know. But just be very, very mindful about the way that you criticize Korean culture. And let us try not to replicate the same structures of power that created all these issues in the first place. Alright? Alright. Thanks so much for listening. I've been Autumn Chu. Uh, if you like this video and you want to hear more rants like this, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon where you can pay me five bucks a month to see the behind the scenes cut of this video and many more is like it. I generally will upload new videos every Tuesday and Friday, although I might miss a day because I'm tired or lazy. But uh, I really hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end and uh, I hope I catch you in the next one. See you around. Bye bye.